Hello everybody, this is Gregory with The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about Lindsay Lohan, her pressure to lose weight after her baby's born, and just go over overall retrospective on Lohan and what the future is for her. Now before we begin, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also post a comment because most of you guys have some sort of relationship with Lohan. The amazing thing about Lohan is that she's only 37 years old. She's one of those actresses that you're kind of amazed at her age. Kira Knightley, someone who's contemporaneous with her. It's the same thing. She's in her late 30s, but these people started so young. A, a classic example would be Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's only 34, but she's been around since she was 16, that we forget how young these people are. Also, it doesn't help that Lindsay Lohan really hasn't been the zeitgeist for the last, oh, I don't know, 10 to 15 years. But I think she's trying to make a comeback. She had a Netflix movie come out called The Irish Wish. So she's doing some promos for that. So she did a, a, a photo cover for Bustle magazine. I didn't even know this magazine existed. But you know, it's funny because I, I, I think it's always interesting when, when celebrities will uh, either reveal some sort of like, I was abused as a child or I was an alcoholic, you know, something like really big, but it's either in the cover of a book because they want to sell the book or they want to sell some magazine covers. And also the, the classic trope that women actresses or actresses do is, you know, I'm tired of being objectified, but then you look at their magazine covers and it's all very sexualized. Either way, I'll show you some of the pictures of Lindsay Lohan for her new cover. And to her credit, as you guys know, uh, Ozempic is, is a big thing right now. It's a diabetic drug that's an injectable. I talk about it over, my, over my, one of my other YouTube channels, Permanent Weight Loss Made Easy. If you're, not, if you're new to this channel, or maybe because I don't talk about it enough, but I was an overweight child and adolescent, and I lost over 100 pounds, and I've kept it off for 30, coming up about 33 years. So I know how to lose weight, I know how to do it, I have 200 episodes over there to talk about if you wanna go check that out. So she talked about pressure to lose weight quickly after having her baby, and she said, there's such a pressure now to be thin, I feel like everything always comes full circle again. So this is at the moment and this too shall pass, but it does seem like there is pressure regarding Ozempic. And she admits that she's not participating in taking that drug. I was so attached to my daughter that my last thought was going on the treadmill. I feel like we put so much pressure on ourselves to have to look good so soon, but you look so beautiful postpartum. Give yourself some time. So I find it interesting, like her, her career is interesting. And as a whole, I like Lindsay Lohan. You know, maybe it's because, I wouldn't say I grew up certainly watching her movies because when she busted out in the scene, like in the, I don't know, like I guess Parent Trap was in the late 90s. I was already in graduate school when it came out. But when you think about her kind of peak run in the mid, in the mid knots, I mean, I'm already in my 30s, but I think there was just something so winning about her if you see her very early movies, like Parent Trap, right? You you watch Parent Trap, she, that came out, she was like 11. And you're just like, wow, she's an amazing, precocious girl. She's a great actress. You could just see it in her. And then when she got to, to, to post-pubescence, so you look at her Freaky Friday, of course, Mean Girls, Confession of a Shopaholic, you know, all these movies are Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, I should say. And then you're like, wow, <clears throat> this girl's got a future. She's young, she's, she's attractive. And then things went off the rails starting in 2007. We talked about this tangentially because one of the earliest episodes I did here on, on the podcast forum was when Lindsay Lohan was in one of her many rehab stints, as she had many during this time. She was asked, or maybe it was part of some sort of team building exercise to write down all the lovers that you've had. In this list, she should have been smart, got leaked. And so when this list came out, and this was 10, 15 years ago, I mean, Us Weekly, all those, those tabloid magazines, had it on the cover. They blotted out certain names, but now with time, we know who those names are. And she had something close to 35 lovers by the time she was 25. I mean, she was riding the carousel of you know what. And you know, I think it was kind of emblematic of the time. So if you look at that list, there's a lot of very well-known men. She dated Wilder Valderrama during this time from that 70s show, but yeah, she was with a lot of guys. And I think at the time, a lot of guys just thought she was attractive and they're like, yeah, I want a piece of Lohan. I mean, she's beautiful, she's famous, and she was always drugging and partying and you know, probably wasn't that hard for her to say no, say yes to Colin Farrell because every woman was saying yes to Colin Farrell during that time. So starting with about Georgia rules, you look around 2006, 2007, 
that's when it starts being reported by directors and producers that she's showing up to sets late, she's showing up drunk or under the influence, and then you saw her career just cascade, and really it cascaded for 15 years. You saw her <clears throat> in movies that were just laughably bad. She, she, she did, a, I remember when this came out, she was Elizabeth Taylor in a Lifetime movie, and she was laughably bad. And then she started doing reality shows. She started getting the fillers and the plastic surgery. And there was a time, like, there was a time where she was, like, with, on the Britney Spears death, the death watch. Like, we thought we were just going to wake up one day and hear that Lindsay Lohan had died of drug overdose. Because, I mean, things were going bad. You could tell that she was spiraling out of control. But to her credit, to her credit, she moved away from Hollywood, which is smart. I mean, a lot of smart celebrities know this. I always talk about... Alicia Vikander and Michael Fassbender, they live in Portugal. You look at even people in America that have moved to outside of Hollywood. Amanda Seyfried and her husband, they live in upstate New York. I mean, the list goes on and on of people who, who, who smartly don't live in LA. So she gets engaged and look, she had a lot of boyfriends until then, but this guy I find to be really interesting, her husband, because she gets engaged to this guy who is exceedingly, exceedingly wealthy. He is, I don't know what his, his, uh, his ethnicity is. They got married, or she gave birth in Dubai, so I'm guessing he is Middle Eastern. But she married a guy by the name of Badir Shamas. And now Badir Shamas is a financier in the Middle East. So that could be who knows anything. Have you ever seen Entourage? You remember there's a Yamir, the guy who wants to buy, I think Medellin. You know, he's one of these guys who lives on a yacht, who has a wife, who wants to sleep with Vince. You know, he could be one of those guys. Who knows? He's estimated to be worth $110 uh, million. million dollars. Just, just, and he's young, right? So uh, he's got some money. So who knows what shady dealings he's doing. But either way, she seems to have got her life cleaned up. She seems to not be doing drugs uh, and alcohol. She gets engaged to this guy. She marries. They have a baby. And now she's uh, doing Netflix movies. She signed a deal with Netflix. Uh, there was a three-film deal. The first one she did was that Christmas movie uh, that came out. Uh, last year that really wasn't that good and then she just did Irish Wish and now she's filming the third one so kudos to Lohan I will always have like a soft spot for her because when you watch movies like Herbie Fully Loaded Parent Trap I mean un unless you're like I got a heart of stone you know you feel bad for her because you realize what happened to her and for some reason like I, 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 I empathize I wouldn't say empathize but I, I have more pity for Lohan than I do for like Britney Spears who I think is just off the tracks but with Lohan, maybe because she did movies and Britney did songs, even though I do run to her songs sometimes. Uh, I don't know, I just, I, I root for Lohan and it seems like she's getting her life together. Now, will she ever get back to being an A-lister? We talked about this in the Kevin Spacey episode. We talked about this on the episode with Army Hammer. Uh, both of these guys were, well, I mean, look, Spacey went to court and was exonerated for touching other men and uh, underage boys. Army Hammer never went to court, but for some reason, just because he's a little pervy in his text messages, his career is gone. Uh, so Lohan, will she ever be A-list? Just like, will Spacey ever be A-list? And I, and I mentioned in that episode, I don't think Spacey's ever going to be A-list. Hollywood can tolerate a, lot, tolerate a lot of things. And if you listen to Corey, uh, Corey Feldman, you know, he talked about in the 80s, uh, there's a lot of Hollywood pre sexual predators uh, that, that go after boys. So uh, it's not like Hollywood is, is, is immune to this kind of pederasty problem. But I don't think Spacey's coming back, even though he's a talented actor. Army Hammer, I think he can lay low because he, was never, he never went to trial, right? And he's a good looking guy. I don't know if he's that good of an actor, but you can judge for yourself if you watch like A Man From Uncle and Social Network. Lindsay Lohan, I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it because I think part of it is if you do watch her Netflix movies, um, she's had some work done. You can tell on her face. And it's not like she's just 37 and aging, uh, but she's 37, but she's had some work done. And I think when you watch her in these Netflix movies, you can kind of tell. And I think that hurts. I think she's still a good enough actress, but I think her good enough actress really worked. Kind of like someone like Jonah Hill, right? There was a time and a moment. And for Lindsay Lohan, it was when she was in her teens, upper teens, lower 20s. And I just think now... Um, I mean, Hollywood likes a good rehabilitation story so they can pout themselves on the back how awesome they are. But I just don't see it. I just don't see Lindsay Lohan ever being even remotely close to an A-lister. I think she's always going to be made for streaming movies, maybe uh, an Amazon Prime show. I think she'll be relevant as long as she's not doing the drugs and alcohol. But either way, I mean, all this Hollywood stuff doesn't matter. What I care more about Lohan is you know, stay sober, have more kids if you want to 
have more kids and just clean up your life and, and enjoy your life. You know, you're, you're being taken care of by a multi-millionaire financier. And you know, I started thinking about this guy, just from the man's, you know, kind of a manosphere perspective. Like, would I want to marry a woman that's had so many sexual partners? Now, you women are like, oh my God, Gregory, you, you need to embrace the sex positive movement. Let me tell you something. No man embraces the sex positive movement. Yes, it's a double standard. I know. I know. I know. But the studies are clear. The more sexual partners a woman have, the, the worse it is for her. She has more depression, more anxiety, uh, higher, higher problems or higher rate of divorce and infidelity. There's just a double standard. I know there is, but most men don't want their wives to have had multiple sexual partners before they get married. And this guy knows she's had at least probably 40, if not probably way more than that. He's like, yeah, I'll still marry her. Who knows? Maybe he's, he's got women on the side. Speculation. But who knows, maybe she, he's got women on the side. But I'm just, you know, like if I have $110 million and I'm some Middle Eastern financier, for me, I'm gonna go pick like a 23-year-old virgin. Sorry, that's what I'm gonna pick. And I would, I would hazard a guess most of you guys, men would pick. So if men, if you're still watching this post in the comments, who would you pick? Would you pick a world-famous actress who's had many sexual partners or would you try to find somebody who doesn't have as much mileage? Guys, otherwise, post in the comments. I wanna hear what you think on Lindsay Lohan. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.